You're listening to the Angry Marks Podcast Network. This is the Undisputed Wrestling Show, and I think on the line we have now the masterpiece himself, Chris Masters. Chris, are you here? Hey, what's going on, guys? Sorry I'm late. Oh, that's all right, brother. Appreciate you joining us here this evening. We were in the middle of talking about uh, Fast Lane pay-per-view. Chris, what was your thoughts on the pay-per-view? Did you get to see it? Uh, no, I didn't get to watch it, actually. Uh, the Lakers were playing the Celtics, and uh, I can't miss the Lakers and Celtics game. No, <laughs> I can't. That's pretty tough to do, especially <laughs> if, you're, if you're from L.A. area. That's for darn sure. So yeah, even though they're having terrible seasons, I still I had to watch it. I mean, you know, I love wrestling and all, but I, I love to do it. I don't necessarily love to watch it anymore. So your your thoughts, Chris, I'm going to get your thoughts on on Sting versus Triple H at WrestleMania. Do you think uh, you like this idea, or do you think it's uh, an old card that's being played trying to bring WCW back into prominence when it's been dead for 15-plus years? Uh, no, I think it's cool because uh, – there's only so many um, kind of, uh, I guess, marquee matchups uh, out there that are left. You know, they've uh, done a lot of the matches that we never thought we'd see. You know, like uh, Shawn Michaels versus Hulk Hogan, for instance, Rock Hogan. You know, a lot of those. Uh, so I always think it's cool when uh, you kind of make something happen. Although I thought it was, my initial thought was it was going to be Taker versus Sting. But, um, you know, Hunter versus Sting, I'm sure, will kill, will be just as... Uh, Good match wise, you know. I think Taker and uh, Sting would probably had a more natural storyline. Mm-hmm. So we're getting we're getting Bray Wyatt versus the Undertaker instead. Do you think this is a means to try to get bring Bray Wyatt's character back up, Chris, or do you think uh, they're pulling at strings here trying to get something that might work? Um, you know, I can't really, I have no idea, because I don't know where his character's at. I'm just really not up to up to date on uh, professional wrestling in terms of, I mean, what's going on in, uh, with the storylines, angles, and whatnot, and who's being pushed, and all that. All I know is what I hear from, you know, people in the business, so I don't know if Wyatt's been deep pushed, and now I guess he's being pushed if he's wrestling taker, I don't know. Okay. So I, I think any time you, I think any time you have a match with the with uh, the Undertaker WrestleMania, that definitely means you're in a, a good spot in the company. Absolutely. You know, one of the first questions I always ask guests when they come on the show, Chris, is what got you even wanting to be in this business? I mean, this is a crazy business, as you can fully attest to. What was it that made you say, you know what, I think I want to do this for a living? Uh, I just loved it so much as a kid, man. And, you know, I think I was 15 and I just started thinking to myself, what do I want to do with my life? And, you know, I was just so obsessed with wrestling. It just seemed like, you know, this is the only thing I really loved, you know, that I absolutely love. And so maybe I should pursue this. And, uh, I did, you know, I just made a conscious decision to do it. I mean, I loved it throughout my whole childhood, Stopped watching for a couple of years and then got hooked on it again. And then there was no looking back pretty much. So, you know, and I always kind of figured that uh, it would work out at least or that I at least make it. So uh, it's kind of cool to look back and see that every, that at least worked out. Not 100%, but as good as could be. In a million years, you think you would have been, been able to sit back and say, yeah, I was in the ring with Ric Flair. I was in the ring with your childhood hero, Shawn Michaels. I was in with Bobby Lashley. I was in the ring with Edge. I was in the ring with all these great legends of the business. I mean, looking at Did you back really put it, Bobby Lashley on that list? I like Bobby. You know, I like Bobby Lashley. I, I yeah, but you, you, I, I like Bobby Lashley too, but you're saying, can you believe that you got to work Shawn Michaels, Ric Flair, Bobby Lashley? Right, it's sorry. like, whoa. I'm not pushing it a little Stop bit. Stop the car. It's like, Easy. <laughs> no, I, I look. You know I, this I, is how this is how I I'll phrase it. I, I meant to say Kurt Angle. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say Lashley. I meant Kurt Angle. <laughs> well, I mean, in terms, no, nothing against Bobby. Obviously, I like Bobby, and he's uh, I like working him. But in terms of like, you know, with the uh, Shans and Flares, I'm just it, it, I'm very grateful that I got to work those guys before they stopped. You know, before Sean retired yeah. and. And, uh, you know, I grew up idolizing Sean, so that was obviously one of the personal, uh, 
that was very uh, a very important thing for me to be able to go out there and uh, work a program with him, you know, and uh, have it come out good and have him be uh, a mentor to, to me. But uh, yeah, you know, uh, you know, a lot of the guys I got to work with, you know, Edge, Hunter, all those guys. I mean, it was uh, when I came up. I mean, it was most of the guys from the generation before me. So I kind of looked up to everybody, you know, uh, as opposed to the second time when I came around when it was, you know, a lot of newer guys. So, um, you know, yeah, it was real cool, man. It was real cool. This is the Undisputed Wrestling Show. We're talking to the masterpiece himself, Chris Masters. Chris, we have a, t- a couple other co-hosts that are on the show as well. We've got the uh, NWA Continental Champion, Will Huckabee, is on the line. And we also have the Bearded Wonder himself, Zane Paisley. I'm going to kick it on over to the Bearded Wonder. What do you got for Chris Masters tonight, Zane? Well, thank you, Masterpiece, for being on with us tonight. I, we really appreciate it. Uh, the the first question no I, I have for you, we had Carlito on our show a, a couple months ago, and he was a lot of fun. I know, know he's a really good friend of yours. Um, he said something about playing uh, NBA uh, 2K with you uh, at the time. Do you guys mm-hmm. play uh, play a lot of video games? Well, together? the irony the irony of that is the reason I was actually late calling into your show is I was just playing NBA 2K with Carlito. <laughs> to our listeners out yeah. there, had, and uh, and, they, and we were losing like we had lost three games in a row we were just having a bad day you know because we were teaming up online and playing other guys and it was just so demoralizing we're like let's shut it down you know that's it for the day and then <laughs> that's when it dawned on me that uh i got you know that i need to call in so uh yeah, there is a lot of it's pretty funny that you bring that up because uh, we were just doing that. <laughs> That's too funny. <laughs> I, I seriously think I think when we talked to him uh, uh, that he, we were interrupting his game, uh, and I think he said he was playing with you. So that that is awesome. So so you, were you the Lakers then? No, we were actually uh, playing as ourselves in the park because we actually did the like I face scan myself. We did a couple of games in there, and then. We played All Star Game uh, West versus we were the e- we were on the Eastern side and we lost I think every game though I mean we we the guys who were playing are very experienced when it comes to uh, video gaming because they were whooping that ass. Oh, that is hilarious. <laughs> yeah, we had to give up for the day. That was it. You know what I mean? It was just demoralizing and uh, embarrassing, quite frankly. Well, very nice. I, 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 that is hilarious, I, and I know we're going to get more into uh, your career here in just a moment. But I, uh, I wanted our listeners to know out in England that you're going to be uh, heading over there next month. Is that correct? Heading where? To England. Uh yeah, I'm going to be there for uh, uh, what is it? March. I'm actually going to be in Scotland too. I'm going to Scotland and England. I'll be there like March 7th through uh, the 15th or so, I believe. Working various shows, uh, PCW's, uh, Bro to Glory, uh, and then also a couple other shows that just got added. I don't have all the information. One's in Denmark and then one's in Scotland, I believe. So, uh, as Rick was alluding to earlier, uh, growing up, dreaming of wrestling the great Kali, and, uh, now you, no, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, but you, but you get to travel the world. And and do what you love to do. You uh, you know I know that you've been over to Australia, New Zealand, all over uh, Europe. What, what what's the far well, not the farthest, but what's the most unlikely place that our listeners would uh, ex- least expect that you've been to? Oh man, there's been some random places, but uh, you know Nigeria is pretty random. You know what I mean? Because I, uh, when you say that, I automatically think of places that were kind of almost uh, borderline third world countries uh-huh. and. You know, and we went to India and parts of India were like that for Rinka King. And then, uh, the other spot was, uh, what did I just say? Um, Nigeria. Nigeria. Yeah. Cause uh, especially if you hear the news lately of what's going on over there, it's just, uh, it's really unsettling kind of those regions. And then, uh, I did do uh, a lot of stuff kind of in various places in the Middle East being like, uh, Egypt and, Israel and the guy was trying to get me to work in Palestine too, and you know, so and Dubai and Qatar, uh, Qatar. So I mean, I'm getting around to some pretty uh, uh, unusual places for wrestling, I guess. You know what I mean? Like, there's not been much wrestling in 
like Qatar, for instance, but it's a very uh, upscale Middle East country. It's very nice. It's, uh, you know, actually, um, you know, definitely not what, what's portrayed in, in terms of the Middle East as far as our media. It's very nice. Well, you know, I want to uh, hang on, Zane. I want to thank not only you, Zane Paisley, but the masterpiece himself, Chris Masters, for ruining my joke that I was getting to. Because before I got blitzed with Bobby Lashley, I was going to say, and the great Kali. <laughs> now you tripped that up. Chris tripped it up even before I got to it. Huh. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm yeah. going to turn over to, uh, to the NWA Continental Champion, the morning star, Will Huckabee. Mr. Thank you. Huckabee. How you doing, Chris? <laughs> All I'm right. good, Let's, man. I'm good. Let's let's actually get into your career. Um, first of all, who introduced you slash trained you uh, into professional wrestling, and how intense or not intense was your training? Uh, what was the second question? How intense was the training? Like, what was the uh, the usual training uh, workout session like? Okay. Um, you know, when people ask me who my trainer was, it's hard to say because I feel like you in wrestling, it's like you have various trainers. Like, yeah, you have your first trainer, but, you know, he gets you so far and then you go on to your next person and maybe he introduces some new stuff to you. You know what I mean? It's like, it's hard to say. I mean, my, I originated in UPW, so my, so, the trainers here were Tom Howard and, uh, and like the Ballard brothers and Mad Dog Mike Bell, you know, and, uh, it was a good place to learn kind of, you know, the fundamentals, so to speak. And then, uh, but really, uh, you know, the progression obviously started once I moved to Louisville and then went to OVW and then started wrestling under Rip Rogers, who was very old school, you know, very much, uh, you know, the old school style of wrestling, the longer matches. I mean, he could get you ready for a 60 minute Iron Man match. Uh, you know, he was your guy. I mean, and uh, so we did. Uh, it was pretty intense with him, too, because I mean, literally, I think our practices were, were at like 8 a.m. in the morning and would go until noon, sometimes one. So, I mean, it's, you know, that's pretty exhausting. And it's early as hell. And, uh, but, you know, it was it was very educational. It was good that we had him when we did because it really uh, built a good foundation for us. And then uh, after that, uh, Rip Rogers, for whatever reason, um, was either let go or left. And then they brought in Lance Storm and uh, Bill DeMont, which, uh, you know, once specifically Lance Storm came along, it was perfect because it, uh, Lance Storm was able to uh, – take everything that Rip had given us, the foundation, and then just refine it to uh, where wrestling was uh, in contemporary times, you know what I mean? Which, you know, you're not going to work a lot of long matches, you know what I mean? You're going to work typically matches are, you know, what, sometimes three, five, you know, if you're lucky, ten minutes, you know what I mean? So it was became, became much more about hitting times and working matches in that uh, amount of time frame and just refining us. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I mean, and then, uh, and, then, and, then, and then and then there were various guys when I got on the road. Like I said, Sean was great to me, and you know. So I mean, like I said, it was just a progression of different people along the way who kind of uh, guided me. You know, I could keep going on and on with the list to be honest, but uh, you know, those were my first initial trainers, and then I had lots of guys who were uh, kind of like mentors along the way. Oh, Arn Anderson, cool. for instance. Oh man, I love that guy. So yep. you get the call up from from OVW. How? What was that first thought that went through your mind when you said you were getting the call up from OVW to the uh, the main roster at WWE? Uh, well, it wasn't to the main roster, you know, it's to developmental. But I was excited, of course. You know, this is a dream come true. I mean, you know, and everything was so new, and I was so young. So, I mean, I was just really uh, fired up about it. You know, I was ready to quit my job and. Uh, you know, I was a little suspect of uh, living in Louisville, but, you know, what the hell, you know, what am I going to do, say no? Uh, but uh, it ended up being cool, man. I mean, uh, it really ended up being, you know, I never went to college, so, I mean, it really kind of was the equivalent of my college. You know, I went there at 19, and I think I spent a good uh, year and a half, maybe two years there, and we were a tight uh, group at that point, too. There was only maybe about 30 of us, and... You know, it was, uh, it was very, the developmental system, it, it was nice because looking back at it, 
it was uh, before everything got serious, you know, because once you get called up, obviously, to uh, WWE, things would get things obviously get much more serious, right? So, um, you know, NOVW was the last bit of innocence and just a plain fun kind of uh, that I had, you know, and it was like college, you know. It was just a good, a good group of guys, and I'm glad I got had that experience in my life. Yeah, now, I was going to ask you about that, like, being younger, uh, being a, a young guy uh, in WWE, it's surrounded by all these guys who have been around for 10, 15 years and stuff. Uh, how was that? Uh, how did they treat you, especially, you know, with your look, your size, uh, the hype that was surrounding you, especially for your debut and stuff? Uh, how was you treated, and how did you feel like the guys received you? Oh, uh, I got heckled big time. You know I mean? I, I got messed with because, you know, you come in there and there's a lot of guys – who have been working their asses off, who are, you know, quite frankly, you know, they know how to wrestle. They know the game better than you. They know how to work, and they're not getting the opportunity. They're lost in the shuffle, and then they see a new young guy coming in. So, uh, you know, it's all part of the test, though, you know what I mean? Because if you're going to be given that push, you know, I realize now, obviously, I mean, you're going to be throwing these uh, – roadblocks you know like people aren't just going to give it up and they're going to mentally test you and mess with you and try to break you and you know so there was a lot of that going on you know and it was hard for me to uh take because you know i was such a fan and i had so much respect for all these guys that i really don't didn't know how to handle it at the time you know it was uh you know just a very overwhelming kind of situation and uh but you know i just knew i had to keep moving forward and, uh, you know, I just needed to, uh, learn basically how to play the game the best that I could, at least, you know what I mean? And like learn how to, uh, you know, not basically just develop thick skin, you know, not take yourself too serious, you know, and be able to, you know, roll with the punches and what, or whatnot, you know, cause, uh, whatever, you know, it's a gossip be and it can be, uh, you know, and there can be uh, at that point there was bullying and whatnot, but, you know, yeah, I was, no, I was gonna say, like, once you get to, I was gonna, I figure once you get to that level, that's when the politics and the buddy buddy system uh, really comes into play. Uh, was that something that really bugged you? Was that something that you just didn't expect and you never saw it coming? Uh, it was just always so hard to figure out, you know, it really was like, you know, initially I didn't have any issues with it just because I was rolled in with the red carpet and giving the push and all that stuff. But then as time went on, you know what I mean? You're just presented with sometimes tests that you don't even know are tests and, you know, all kinds of different things. I mean, it's just, it's a very, uh, it's an unorthodox company to work for. If that's uh, a good way to put it, you know what I mean? In terms of, uh, the things they do and the rhyme and reason and whatnot. But, uh, you know, I mean, it was fun. I, you know, I have positive I, memories. I have, uh, you know, not so positive memories. I mean, it's just like anything else. But, uh, you know, I wouldn't take back. I mean, you know, even having to endure all, all the stuff coming in or, like you said, having to endure uh, guys giving me a hard time being new and coming in and getting a push. Uh, looking back, it wasn't so horrible because at the same time, it was just like, you know, it was so exciting. At the same time, it was just like, uh, yeah, it was intimidating, but I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. You know what I mean? I'll take it. This is the Undisputed Wrestling Show. We are talking to the masterpiece, Chris Masters. And, you know, Chris, uh, you made mention of, of, you know, coming in with the red carpet. And you had a hell of a push, right? You know, especially right out of the gate. But it seemed like after a while, you got more known for your master lock challenges and doing the full mouth and hold and all that stuff. I guess looking back on it, do you feel that the emphasis on the hold and the challenges ended up overshadowing what you were capable of doing in the ring? Uh, well, I wouldn't say initially. I think initially they, they did a great job of building it, but there was a certain point where it didn't probably didn't need to be done again. You know what I mean? Maybe... You know, probably after Bobby broke it, it should have never been done again, to be honest. Uh, but, uh, um, yeah, I just, I, I, so I'd say initially they did a great job. And, you know, and to be honest, overall it was, it was well done because, I mean, it still gets reactions and people still champ for it when I wrestle, like on, in independent wrestling, on the independent wrestling scene. So, 
I mean, they did do it right, but I mean, it was, you know, there's just certain, certain things that they exhaust, you know, and like, I can feel it too, you know what I mean? It's like, I, you know, I was a fan, so there's been times when they've asked me to do things, uh, and I was just like, ah, like, nobody, you know, I don't think as a fan I would even want to see myself do this, you know what I mean? Like, there's got to <laughs> be something else. You know, like, believe me. So, uh, you know, it can be painful, uh, uh, that aspect. Who, who came up with the idea of, of doing the full Nelson in the first place, Chris, and then doing that challenge series? Uh, well, the idea was always to bring me in with, like, some kind of finisher, uh, and build off of that and see if anybody could either, you know, beat the time count if it was a bump or, uh, you know, break the full Nelson if it was a full Nelson. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I know that I didn't come up with a full Nelson idea because, you know, it's obviously so basic. And, uh, you know, I came up on kind of probably the same kind of stuff that uh, we all grew up on uh, around that age group where, you know, you wanted something flashy or something a little more uh, exciting. But, you know, what happened was is WWE was trying to recondition their fans because they had pushed the envelope so far already. You know, they had guys, like, jumping off of buildings, practically. So they really wanted to kind of go old school, and I think that might have been part of the decision. And it could have been Hunter or Arn Anderson, one of the two. They came up with the full Nelson idea, and then, you know, then that turned into um, Master Lock, because being the masterpiece of Chris Masters, it, it all just kind of worked. And, uh, you know, I, I, there could be a a chance to the prevalence of submissions mattering more because of the effect of uh, mixed martial arts, obviously, you know, so I don't know, you know, it could be both. It could be one of the two. I know definitely they were trying to go back and recondition the fans to like some more basic stuff and not have to, uh, you know, risk injuring their guys with, you know, by doing all this crazy thing. So I think that I know that was definitely part of it. I hope this doesn't come off as a stupid question, and you may not even know the answer to this. But my curiosity has always wondered if the Master Lock Lock Company ever called the WWE with any objections to that name of that hold. No, because they ah uh, they didn't, and but WWE did all the because uh, I remember when we were um, before they greenlit the name, they were checking on it. They were checking on all the. Uh, you know, copyright laws or, or whatever, you know, intellectual property, whatever they had to look up and, uh, they got the green light for it, you know, otherwise they wouldn't have, uh, done it so hard and openly. So when, uh, somebody like John Cena makes a comment like that, Chris Masters is the strongest man he's ever been in the ring with, what's that make you think? Ah, that he's lying. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, it, you know, to be honest, uh, to, to be honest, John Cena is probably one of the strongest guys I've ever seen. Honestly, I mean, the guy is, uh, I mean, say what you want. I know a lot of, uh, probably wrestling fans from our, uh, from our genre, so to speak, or, or our age group, uh, probably are not too big on Cena. You know, it might be the younger crowd, but I mean, the guy is, uh, like a mutant when it comes to strength and, you know, he's freaking just, <laughs> what's up? I said, he's freaking ripped. I don't care what anybody says. The man's strong. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not even just that. He's just, he's legitimately like strong. I mean, if you see his hands, I mean, his hands are freaking just ginormous and his wrists, the guy's just, uh, you know, he's a mutant built man. He's, he's, uh, <laughs> definitely, uh, something else. He's a prototype. I, I, I don't know if Bobby Lashley might actually be, uh, I, you know, I don't know who the strongest guy is, to be honest, uh, that I've ever felt in the ring. I mean, I might put Bobby on that list, or at least Bobby felt the strongest in terms of uh, just physically. I mean, the guy feels like a rock. It's ridiculous. And even big guys like the Big Show, I mean, do they even compare? Well, I mean, it's just different, you know. I don't know. Like, Big Show's strong as hell, but, you know, just when you feel an athlete who's – uh you know, your size and they can handle you a certain way. Like, you know, Jack Swagger actually is pretty deceivingly mm -hmm. strong too, you know, like that's just kind of a different kind of strength. You know what I mean? It's like from a seven footer, you're expecting some strength, but when you got a guy who's, uh, you know, six, 
you know, in the six foot range and athletic and they're strong, it's like they can really, uh, it just surprises you a little more and, you know, they have their way with you and it's, uh, you know, it's just it's pretty incredible with some guys, to be honest. I mean, I'm sure the guys have thought the same thing about me, you know, at certain points, you know. So when you reach a certain level and you get get up to a, a WWE type level, and you, like I said, you were you came out with a with a great push. You got to compete for the WWE title, and eventually, obviously, it starts settling down a little bit. You start taking on uh, Santino for the Intercontinental Belt. I guess as, as a professional wrestler, does it bother you how they book you when you when you lose to Santino the way you did? I guess uh, all those roll ups, I guess, or whatever you were doing. Does that kind of stuff bother you at all, or you just take it, hey, it's a paycheck, I'm doing what I'm doing? Uh, well, yeah, of course it bothers me. I mean, you know, you want, uh, once you get a taste of that push, you don't want it to go. And, uh, but, you know, it just after a certain point, I mean, it just, I, I don't want to say I was just collecting a check either, you know what I mean? Because I always right. cared. You know, it's not like I was just like, oh, whatever, what am I doing? Okay, cool. And, you know, whatever, paychecks in the mouth, because I did care. But, uh, you know, just didn't really know what to do. You know, didn't know what to do, didn't know how to, you know, it's it's not like they're, they're not very good in terms of directing, you know what I mean? There's a lot of uh, talk that might go on about you, but then uh, doesn't necessarily get to you, you know what I mean, sometimes, you know what I mean, that you might need to hear. So, you know, maybe maybe there was something I needed to hear at that point that I didn't, or maybe I wasn't listening, I don't know. But, you know, you can't do, uh, at the same time, it's not like I can tell them no. <laughs> so, you know, it's, you know, I mean, maybe I could have, maybe I could have objected, but, you know, and again, they asked me uh, to lose Santino. Santino's a good guy, you know, and uh, I'm going to do the job that's asked. You know, I think, you know, concerns only get raised once it starts becoming uh, re- repetitive and, uh you know, that's when it becomes an issue of like, okay, well, what uh, what did I do to get on the bad side of the boss? <laughs> right. And, and obviously at the end of your first run, you were let go because of the substance abuse policy. But my question was when you did make your return back, it was completely different when you came back in. Do you feel that Vince was almost trying to mock you a little bit in your second run? Did he really want you back? I I can't even tell. I, who who even knows? I don't know because I know I was badly booked, uh, you know, from the start. But then again, in my last couple of years, I made strides in terms of my in ring wrestling. You know, I became one mm-hmm. of the better in ring guys on the roster. The thing is, is all the matches were on superstars. So um, <laughs> I don't know. You know, like who who's to say really? But. Uh, you know, th- there was stuff about that run, obviously, that I hated, you know, which, I, you know, obviously not being used, I wasn't happy about. But at the same time, I was really able to understand uh, through being on Superstars and being able to get have 10, 15-minute matches on television, you know, technically still, it was really able to uh, give me a chance to learn the craft of what we did and the... Uh, how to get emotionally invested in matches and the art of it. And it really, uh, at least uh, for the people that watch, they noticed the difference in terms of, uh, wow, you know, Chris Masters is actually, he can back it up now in the ring, he can go, you know, because I was never uh, consistent before that. And even like the match, like when I worked Sean, yeah, that went good. But, you know, I could have matches with guys that were better than me, sure. But, you know, I wasn't capable of having to match up guys of my town or lesser. And then, uh, you know, within my last two years, I was pretty much the guy, you know, the baby face that could work with any heel and pull a good one out of them. Well, I'm not going to lie to you, Chris. That second run bugged the crap out of me. <laughs> it just, in my opinion, I always thought you had a, a great look. You had superstar written all over you. And, yes, we understand the issue at the end of the first run. I get it. But people deserve second chances. And if they didn't, weren't interested in you, then why hire you and, and, and try to put you down in a position of... Well, it was a shitty run, yeah, it was a shitty run but, it was a shitty run, but I'll, I'll tell you this. If you YouTube or Google or watch any of those matches from that I had in, like, the year 2011, I mean, just check it out, and you'll see the difference in terms 
of what I was doing back 10 years ago as opposed to what I can do today. You know what I mean? It's night and day. So, yeah, on paper it was a crap run. Yeah, like I wasn't in any storylines, angles or whatever. But, I mean, you know, out of it came, you know, one of the best in-ring workers probably going today. I mean, whatever. Yeah, they didn't use me. They didn't keep me. And it wasn't enough for me to keep my job there. But, uh, you know, in the end, uh, that that was one of my personal goals anyways, just because I was so sick of having the uh, reputation of just being a guy who was uh, stepped out of the gym and just got the job and got the push and all that. And, you know, I just really wanted to, you know, basically shut up the uh, quote-unquote smart fans and, uh, you know, show them that, uh, hey, uh, you know, I want to be known as a guy who can work in the ring. I don't want to get have the Lex Luger or, or – uh, <laughs> right. You know, I, I don't want that whole typecast, you know what I mean? Because that's not what I was about. That's not what I grew up watching. I mean, and I get it, you know what I mean? And I understand it. So it was, it was always kind of weird getting that criticism from fans. And, you know, it was like I felt like I was one of them. You know what I mean? I'm like, like I'm one of you. I get it. But just understand that's not me. And, uh, I mean, that was one of my personal things. And I feel like I was able to accomplish that, which is a, a personal victory to me. So, uh, yeah, whatever. The second run uh, on on paper and in terms of achievements, uh, crap. But, you know, a lot was learned there. And uh, it actually, it, wrestling has become more fun to me now just because I, I've had that run and now I'm so comfortable doing what I do in the ring that it's just, you know, it's just, it's so much more fun now. You know, it's like I still have the nerves but the excitement outweighs the nerves, and that's, like, uh, a good place to be. Well, after WWE, Chris, obviously you got involved with with Rinka King. Uh, you had a dark dark tryout match with TNA. I guess tell us a little bit of what it was like working in India for them with Jeff Jarrett and all that, and how close were you to signing a contract with TNA, or were you? Uh, it was fun working with Jeff and all of them. Rinky King, I loved it. The dark match went good. Surprisingly, uh, the TNA crowd was very, uh, receptive for me. But, uh, and I was under the impression that I would be working there, although I wasn't like banking on anything. Cause uh, by that point, obviously, I already learned that, uh, when it comes to this business, you don't, um, Basically, you don't count your chickens before they hatch, I guess would be the expression. You know, like, you never, even if you're told something, it's like, till that happens, you know, don't, you know, don't bank on it. You know, I mean, Carlito and me were supposed to win the tag belts at WrestleMania 22, and then the day of it changed, you know what I mean? And there's been numerous instances of stuff like that. So, you know, uh, I walked out of there with, under the impression that they were uh, definitely interested, you know, that came from the Hulkster, uh, even his son calling me, but, uh, you know, whatever. It's just one of those things, man. I don't know. Maybe they had, they already had enough big white guys over there. Maybe they feel like they didn't have use for me. I don't know. I can't really sum it up again. Cause, uh, I mean, I went there to do the, uh, obviously to do the dark match and just, uh, see if there was any interest or whatever. But at the same time, you know, uh, I was so booked on the indies that it's like, uh, you know, at that time they didn't want you to work indie shows that were televised. So like, you know, I, I didn't know if it was even going to be worth it to me. It was depending on what was, uh, what were they going to be willing to offer? And, uh, you know, would I be willing to take it based off of, uh, what I'm already doing? So, uh, you know, cause I've probably been one of the busier guys on the indie scene since I've left still to this day right now so um you know that was another uh factor to consider but i don't know you know i mean is tna a good place to go maybe i don't know i haven't watched the product lately is i don't know how do you guys follow the product i watch it every week i mean i i enjoy the product i the storylines can be lacking obviously they've been better than they were three years ago but I don't know, but right now it's uh it's interesting to see Samoa Joe leaving the company and you know, AJ Styles obviously gone. It seems like it's a completely new uh, mode of uh mode of what they want to get done now. I think they're they're starting to look at younger guys and guys who haven't been in the in the promotion. Yeah, fresh faces. 
Hey, Chris, have you ever checked out Lucha Underground? They filmed that in L.A., and I think you'd be a perfect fit for them. Uh, yeah, I think they filmed this past weekend. Um, I haven't watched it, uh, but I've definitely seen and heard of it, and I talked to Chavo about it. But uh, one of those things, uh, I don't know, they're, they, they, I think all their spots are full. They don't um, apparently at least need me at this point. So, uh and, I mean, they really film, I think, once every three months. I mean, it's not like it's a consist. it's not a consistent working gig necessarily, you know what I mean? So, yeah. I mean, basically a bulk of my work right now is, uh, I mean, half of my work is Europe and the UK, half, uh, the other half is, uh, you know, domestic and then uh, other odd countries. I'm going to fire my last question to you, Chris, if I may. And um, in TNA now, as part of uh, James Storm's revolution, Mahabali Vera is in the promotion. I know you work with him a little bit in, um, in over in Indian Rinka King. He's got a short name, and forgive me that I can't remember it. But what was your impression of that guy when you when you hooked up with him? Can you say the name again? Mahabali Vera. He's got the big powerhouse Indian wrestler over in Rinka King. The big, uh, he, where is he now? He's from India. He was a, a, a guy from India when you were wrestling yep. in Rinka King. I thought you had uh, some interaction with him a little bit. Oh, yeah. But are you, did you say he's in the United States now, or are you just asking me he, about he him? Is. He is. He is in TNA now. He's part of James Storm's revolution. But when you were in Rinka King, I think you crossed paths a little bit. And I was wondering what your impression was when he was as green as he was at that stage. Oh, well, those guys were just all really green. All And they were, I mean, it was a culture clash. They were very green, and they didn't, um, but he did well. You know what I mean? Like, he actually did very well in terms of uh, of just listening. And, you know, and like, you know, like from what I can remember, uh, for being a guy with uh, such little experience, I mean, he was able to hold his own well enough in there to not look like a guy with such little experience. So, uh, but, you know, those guys really, uh, obviously, they didn't they didn't know anything about wrestling etiquette or anything. They were kind of casted out of uh, India, you know, casted maybe actors, even actors slash athletes. So, you know, it really, it was a challenge having to guide all these guys and get them to work with us and, you know, them understand that this is physical, what we do and not just the show, you know, cause they really, you know, weren't liking all the physicality, but that's how, you know, that's how we roll. So, uh, so, you know, those were the only real obstacles, but I mean, for the most part, everybody did pretty damn well. I mean, considering, this is the Undisputed Wrestling Show. We're talking to the masterpiece, Chris Masters. And the prophet, Rick Craig, is signing off here after hour number one and handing it off to Zane Paisley, the bearded wonder, and the NWA Continental Champion, Will Huckabee. Chris, thank you for joining us tonight. You'll still have a few more questions with the other two guys, but uh, I am leaving at this point, and uh, everyone have a great evening. Thanks, Rick. Have a good night. Good evening. Thank, thank you, yeah. brother. Chris, I know our time is uh, coming up uh, short with you. Um, I just uh, wanted you would mentioned that you spend half your time in the States, half your time in Europe. How can our uh, listeners follow your career and know if, if you're coming to their area? Uh, Twitter and Instagram, uh, ChrisMasters310. And, uh, you know, uh, and then email Masterpiece at li- or Masterpiece83 at live.com. But uh, that's... Uh, the main place in Facebook, real Chris Masters. Well, and I, I just, I just love it that you are out there on the independent scene and still being able to put on great shows for fans and showing that you don't need a huge machine like the WWE behind you to make it work. So I commend you. And as you were saying, during your second run, it might not have been the uh, best booked, but man, you, you changed so much as an in-ring performer and it just, it makes me so happy that uh, that you found you figured everything out and that you're such a great performer these days. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah, it, it definitely feels like a, uh, a and it could, that's an accomplishment in itself. You know what I mean? You can't always uh, you got to look at the silver lining in certain things, and uh, 
that was definitely a silver lining and it's something I carry with me to this day, you know, and any wrestling show I go to is that confidence. So, you know, they didn't, you know, leaving the company wasn't, uh, what didn't, uh, destroy my confidence or bring me down or anything like that. It was just like, all right, you know, uh, let me roll with this. And uh, because it was time anyway, if they weren't going to use me, it was time to go. I mean, I had already, I already thought about leaving, but I just couldn't bring myself up to leaving the job that I had wanted my whole life. So, uh, you know, it was somebody, something had to give. So they, uh, they finally made their move. And, uh, you know, I rather that than be, uh, stuck lost in the shuffle forever. You know what I mean? I'd rather do what I'm doing now. Yeah. Hey, Will, do you have uh, one more question for uh, the Masterpiece Chris Masters? Um, it was, I don't know if it was so much a question as a statement uh, that he made earlier. Chris, I'm going I'm to say this right here. You know, you say that you're not one of the strongest guys whatsoever, um, and I mean this with all due respect and with with, with such amazement. Um, the, everybody's seen it a couple of years ago, stuff on TMZ. Uh, unfortunately, you know, your mother had a house fire. I don't know anyone else that can pull a tree out of the ground. <laughs> well, yeah. That's, let's just say adrenaline is an amazing thing. <laughs> like, you know, um, what, what, what was, I know you got so many emails and letters, uh, and probably messages and stuff online and stuff about that. Uh, but what was the general, the general thread throughout all the messages you got after that? Uh, just amazement, you know, of the situation. I mean, it, I mean, I got more attention than anything I've ever done in wrestling. I mean, I had, uh, I was on Good Morning America the next day and TMZ. I mean, it was ridiculous, but, um, you know, uh, I don't know. It was just crazy. You know, I just, you know, that I, the, all I can sum up that moment of the, the tree is, is, once, uh, you know, once I felt like there was a possibility she could really die is when all that happened. And, uh, you know, I made sure it wasn't, she wasn't going to die. So, I mean, I don't know what else more to say about it. I mean, uh, it's, it was, yeah, sure. It was nice. All the attention after, of course, but, uh, <laughs> obviously I wasn't thinking about that at the time. How, how is well, your, mom your mother? Doing these days? What's up? How, how is your mother doing these days? Oh, she's doing great. She's doing great. She's actually, uh, you know, they renovated that place. It's freaking beautiful now, and she's uh, doing better than ever, to be honest. Well, please tell, please give her our best wishes to tell her that she should be very proud of her son, both in the ring and out of the ring. Uh, well, thank you, man. I appreciate that. That means a lot, man. Thank you. All right. Uh, Chris, What is there anything else you want to tell our listeners, your fans, uh, before before we have to let you go? Uh, is there anything, uh, not, nothing I can think of off the top of my head. I'm not, uh, <laughs> I think, I think, I think I've expressed, uh, probably enough for, uh, everybody today. <laughs> Open myself up. Well, Maybe <laughs> I, 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 I could, I could always say namaste. Yeah. Can, can you, before you go, can you give all your social medias again to our listeners? Yeah. It's Chris Masters 310 on Twitter and Instagram. Facebook is Real Chris Masters, if you can find me on there. And uh, that's the best place to kind of follow up on me and to see what I'm doing and uh, or uh, even reach out. Okay. Well, thanks so much. And tell Carlito that, uh, that we remembered uh, about your NBA 2K games, and uh, best of luck to you guys on that. Still, t- still uh, t- uh, uh, when we when we play tomorrow, believe me, this, this will come up in conversation. I will tell them how... Uh, I just did an interview uh, of where they were just bringing up our 2K obsession. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that was probably my biggest pop ever on this show. So thanks so much. We appreciate you coming on. Uh, no problem, guys. Thanks for having me. All right, guys. This is the Undisputed Wrestling Show. We just had a great talk with the masterpiece, Chris Masters. He's making a workout on the indie scenes. Um so much improvement in his second WWE run. Uh, really great stuff. And what an open and, and nice guy. And, uh, that is, I, well, I, I seriously thought that was the funniest moment I've ever had on this show when he said that he was just done playing, uh, 2K, uh, NBA 2K with, with Carlito. 
you know, that that was actually pretty funny. But it goes to show that A, these guys have lives outside of wrestling. Uh, mm-hmm. B, that some guys still keep up with each other after WWE. Mm-hmm. And it's great, most importantly, to see the continuity between our guests. <laughs> yes, yes. 